What's going on guys and gals, Bonafide Hustler here coming to you live from my office and today I'm gonna to show you some really good items that you can sell on eBay. We're gonna look at five items I think you'll really enjoy the show. Okay, so don't forget to hit the subscribe button because there's always good content coming down on my channel and uh, if you like the content, you're learning a couple new things, then make sure that you hit the like button. Okay, so let's get right to it. Where did I buy some of these items that came from thrift stores, that came from garage sales? Um, I think that's pretty much it. And one, yeah, thrift stores, garage sales, basically. So if you're dealing with eBay, it's a perfect place to get great, great inventory. And if you're lucky enough, you find new stuff. Uh, but most of the time, you're fi you're finding used things, and used things sell really well on eBay. But you have to find the right kind of items, right? So, anyways, these are items that uh, completely align with my recent strategy of uh, you know making really good money on eBay uh, versus the time that I put into it versus the money that I spend to acquire these items. But I want to show you five. Five items today that I think you'll really enjoy. All right, so the very first one is probably the one that's going to yield the most profit. And this one was found uh, two weekends ago at a garage sale. You might be thinking, what the hell? Like, that's kind of awkward. Like, what the hell is it? So this is an antique coffee grinder. Really neat. You put the grounds up there, or no, you put the coffee beans up here. You grind it manually, and it comes with little coffee grounds down there. So that's pretty cool. This was five bucks. I want to say at a garage sale, maybe ten bucks. I think it was five. Okay, I think it was ten bucks. Okay, so it was ten bucks at a garage sale. Uh, this is basically a crystal number three, a crystal number three um, arcade arcade crystal number three uh, coffee grinder, which is actually. Kind of hard to find, but if you look at eBay, there are plenty of them sold and from prices around, let's say, 60 all the way up to like 250 to $300. And this is a number three model, so it's actually a little bit harder to find. So, you know, when I find things like this at garage sales, I'm thinking two things. One is eBay. Two is, hey, I could put that in my vintage antique booth as well because I have one of those in town. It's kind of like a consignment kind of thing. But anyways, it's a booth that is unmanned that I can drop off anything that's vintage, retro, and antique and I can tag it myself. I don't have to be there to sell it because the people at the front of the antique mall, um, you know, people that walk around the mall buy things from booths and they take it to the front. Anyways, but that's aside the fact, that's just one of my side businesses. This is going to definitely go to eBay. Now, upon scrutiny, I found that it has a little crack down there. Not a huge deal. I still think that I can eke out 100 bucks on this thing all day long. So anyways, it's a nice thing that can go on eBay. And eBay is great for things like antiques or sometimes even as, you know, vintage trinkets can go on eBay. But this has use to it. I mean, you actually, it, it can be on a wall. It's a great conversation piece and it's still fully functional as well. So yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's definitely one of the things that you can be putting on eBay to make some money. And definitely one of those things that when you're going to garage sales or estate sales or yard sales, uh, you definitely won't find this at a thrift store. But if you're going to those other avenues, um, you know, don't just sit there and only look for clothes, for example, or only look for sporting goods. Expand your knowledge so you can make more money in the same amount of time that you're going to be there in the first place, right? Why not know about so many things to put on eBay when you go to a garage sale or an estate sale or yard sale or thrift store? Thrift store, like, why not know as much as possible? That way, you don't waste any of your time. You're always finding stuff, and uh, you know if you're lucky enough. Because honestly, I was like, this is gonna sell for like 30 to 50 in my booth, and I looked it up. I was like, damn, that's actually a lot more than I thought, and that's great. But that seems to happen a lot, you know. Um, so that's good stuff. Definitely be looking at things like this. Or even if it wasn't working, make a great conversation piece in a house. So, um, you know, people on eBay, when they want to look for, people will look for interesting things on Etsy and interesting things on eBay, kind of like that copy thing. So that's one of the things that you can sell on eBay. Definitely a good item to look for. Let's look about, let's talk about something that I found yesterday. This was $6. And I really think that this could probably sell between 60 and about 75 bucks, okay? Because the colors are definitely better than a lot of the other colors that I saw that were uh, comps on eBay that are selling the same exact product, basically. This is a vintage. You will never, never guess the brand of this thing, right? You'll never, never guess the brand. So I'm going to show you this thing. I'm going to hide the brand. And I want you guys that are watching live right now um, to comment what the brand might be. So here is this kind of cool windbreaker 90s style jacket definitely 90s i don't think these colors were a big thing in the 80s uh what's the brand of this you will never never guess it but things like this sell on ebay whether it be ski jackets or one-piece ski suits windbreakers with really wild colors um 
you know, wild sweaters, like that kind of stuff sells on eBay. Uh, this is a very light windbreaker with a mesh interior with the breathability, almost like a Columbia uh, shirt, like a PFG Columbia shirt. It has that breathability in the back as well. So it's blocking wind, but you're not going to get hot in this thing. So no one's ever, ever going to guess this brand. If someone does, my gosh, like I might actually send it to that person. But anyways, <laughs> um, no, like I, I got to make money on this kind of stuff. That's what I'm in the business for. I, I'm not in the business of buying stuff at thrift stores, making a YouTube video about it, and then shipping it off to some random subscriber. Although that would be super cool um, if I did that with everything, wouldn't it? Ah, so Ripley's dude guessed it. It's actually Woolrich. You would see, no one would ever think that. It's a Woolrich garment. It's not, not made of wool at all. Isn't that crazy? I, it was just it was just bonkers. So, you know, when you're looking through the aisle, I noticed just that that purple kind of color to it. And then I saw a little bit of the pink and I was like, all right, cool. Then you see that like that aqua seafoam green kind of looking thing. And it all comes together in a really good looking windbreaker. It's a men's large. Like, it's just awesome. So this is definitely a good thing to put on eBay. It's a good thing for my retro antique booth, too. But this is going to go on eBay. Um, my guess is it's going to weigh about a pound, 1.4, you know, uh, a pound and four ounces, something like that. It's going to ship less than 10 bucks anywhere in the USA. I do live in Austin, Texas. So those are some of the things that are going through my head, uh, you know, as I... Uh, you know, buy these things. And in fact, now that I've just compacted it down, it'll definitely fit in a padded poly rate, which my rate is 690 here in Austin, Texas. So um, you can kind of do the math, you know, 690 right there, $6 buy-in cost. If I sell it, mm, let's hope like around 70 bucks or something like that, then that yields some pretty good money. Okay. And it's unique enough to where when someone looks at this and they try to find a comp on it, it's going to be hard to find. So that way they'll be like, ah, I got to get that jacket. Like that's the one I want. So anyways, I think it's a really good thing to have, um, you know, uh, as, as part of the, my resale arsenal right there. Nice. Okay, so let's talk about something else. You know, technically there are actually six items I'm gonna show you on this show. I always give you guys a bonus. So for bonuses, you always have to hit the like button for me, all right? I give you a bonus, you do me something as well. All right, good to see everyone here. We have 64 live viewers in the house. If you do want to catch me live, I typically go live between 2 o'clock and 4 o'clock or maybe 5 o'clock central time, okay? And as the summer comes along and starts getting 100 degrees, I will definitely be doing uh, maybe an earlier block or something like that. But Let's talk about something I picked up yesterday, which is cool. And shout out to Mike, who's a local reseller here in Austin, Texas, who I've bumped into twice at the same thrift store. So that was neat. Um, I won't say what thrift store it is because it's a really good one. Um, it's definitely honey hole-ish. Um, and I found this. Um, he found some great things. I mean, he literally just found something really awesome, like right under my nose. Like that was pretty cool. Um He's, he does a lot of clothing and he does other stuff too, but uh, shout out to Mike. So what did I find from this thrift store? I found this and I found something else. Um, this is pretty cool, right? Um, somewhere out there, there is a animal that is not living because it got converted into these shoes or these boots, right? Now it's sad. I know an animal had to go down to build this, but... Um, you know, I am a reseller and a reseller has to look at things, you know, as money. Right. And so I saw this thing and I was like, damn, like I've spent enough time in Colorado uh, on vacations and stuff. And I go into all the stores out there and you'll find things like this in the higher end stores like Overland or something like that, where a lot of the jackets are fur based or smooth leather, uh, goat skin, all that kind of stuff. And you're going to find furs. Uh, now, furs are not super popular anymore. I mean, they're, they're kind of popular in maybe some of the northern uh, states or the central northern states, whatever. Um, fur accents are really popular on jackets, but fur boots, like not super, super easy to find. And so this is a long tail item, okay? But long tail items do sell okay on eBay as well, especially if you have a good size. All right, you know what you're looking at and you know what you kind of want to get out of it. Then it's okay to get into a long tail item. So what did I pay for these? I paid 12 for these because it was marked right here, but I took some nail polish remover and I took it right off. And it was in silver Sharpie. What's up, Matt Jackson? Good to see you. Gave me two bucks for a bona fide hustler dopio espresso. Thanks, Matt. I will definitely get one on your behalf. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at these. The size women's 
All right, seven and a half, pretty awesome. What's the brand? You might be thinking that. What's the brand? So the brand is called Finbull, I want to say. Yeah, Fin, Fin or Finbull, F-I-N-B-U-L, B-U-L. I think that's what it is. It's made in Norway. Uh, size 38 is the EU size, but in in uh, USA, it's about seven and a half. That's a very good size with women's. I'd assume that these with the uh, kind of faux sheepskin interior could be real, honestly, at this point. Um, and whatever the hair is on the outside of the hide or whatever, you know, or the fur, I guess it's hair. Um, could be llama, who knows? But I'm gonna try to get a long tail 100 to 150 out of these. That's my plan on these things right here. Cause they are rare enough. They got some nice colors to them uh, for 12 bucks. I'll hold out for the $100 sale on this. So anyways, I thought that was a pretty good one to uh, pick up. I did my scan of them and they are in very good condition. In fact, if you look at the bottoms, of things like this and you can sell all kinds of shoes on ebay um, that are kind of like this theme in fact one of the more prominent boots that you can sell that kind of have this theme is uh joan of arc uh sorel boots right they're called joan of arc sorel boots look up sorel joan of arc and you'll see that they have fur on the outside up here they're water resist uh completely waterproof water water resistant uh boots and they have resale values of about 100 to 300 dollars so um i have found two joan of arcs in my entire life and um yeah so you know you make that play and uh i think something like this as rare as it is will always be in demand on ebay so that's the plan on that one at the same thrift store um and this is let's let's call this find number six i had to rescue this there's I kind of have an issue being with being a reseller, and that is sometimes when something is a little too cool, I have to sometimes bend my rules, um, and I, sometimes I have to pick things up that I know don't coincide with my current resale strategy of making 50 or more on each flip that I make. That, that's my target for 2018, um, and this point forward is a minimum, all right, of 50 bucks or more on every new thing that I'm acquiring. With the exception of a couple things, right? I just cannot leave some of these things behind. I can't leave vintage video games behind that are decently priced, um, where I'll maybe make ten bucks or twenty bucks, and I have to. I feel like rescuing a lot of cool nostalgic things. And here's something that's. I just had to get it. It was five bucks. Like it was just a no-brainer. Like, oh, really? Five bucks? Because the buckle alone on this thing is probably worth twenty-five bucks, maybe thirty bucks. Okay, um, but then it had the rest of it with it. Like the whole belt was there. So this is what I got for five bucks from that thrift store, and I thought it was pretty good. Like I'm surprised, you know, even after an hour of it being opened up with, like, what seemed to be a hundred people in this tiny little thrift store, that I was able to find something as cool as this which is a vintage bergamot, bergamo, bergamot, however you want to say it, Colt Revolver's belt buckle with a really nice tooled leather belt. Five bucks. Like, would you pop on this for five bucks? You know, the fact that it has the belt with it, and it's speculate, I speculate that it's about a 36 to a 38 men's, um, you know, that has something to do with the price too. So maybe I can get 40 for this, right? So I'll, you know, with everything all said and done in a small enough box or actually in a padded poly rate, right, because I know this is going to be over 16 ounces, um, that I'll probably be able to make about 25 bucks, but I would have rescued something. I have something neat to look at and, you know, learn about and everything like that. I have hustled belt buckles before, both in my booth. I have at least eight or 10 just chilling there right now. Um, and I've sold some on eBay as well. So uh, certain ones, and especially when they are just chilling here with the belt itself right on there, it's like, all right, like I have to, I had to, I, I have to rescue it. Like I have to rescue it. And I see a lot of people are saying all day, LOL. What's up to Margaret and all these other peeps in the chat? What's up, Thriller Gorilla Picker? Yes. Anyway, so thought it was pretty good. Had to get it. You know, I can't pass it up. I just can't. Um, all right. At the same thrift store. Man, I bought three things at this thrift store. This one's pretty good. Um, while I was talking to Mike at the thrift store, there was a mannequin nearby. There were a bunch of mannequins with stuff on them. And there was a lot of like rodeo Western themes on these mannequins. And I looked at something and I was like, hmm, I wonder if that's Scully. All right. And so there was a Pearl Snap shirt with this thing on it and a cowboy hat on top of the mannequin. I was like, no, on the cowboy hat, no on the, you know, the Pearl Snap shirt. But what is the vest? And I was like, oh man, that looks like a Scully. And sure enough, pulled it off the mannequin. It's a Scully 48, which is about a large, really, in men's. Um, 
This is a leather, could be a goatskin leather. It's really, really smooth at this point. Um, but yeah, a really nice leather vest. I mean, it's like perfect. So I noticed one thing on this one is that the last button is missing, but that's not like a huge, huge deal killer because a lot of people don't even button all five of them anyway. But anyways, I will definitely describe, uh, you know, put that in the description. This was a, what was this thing? 10 bucks, I want to say, maybe eight, something like that. I, can't, I, I totally forget at this point. In really good condition, this will probably be the fourth or fifth that I've ever resold my entire life. I've sold them in distress status, uh, this status, black version, um, and they sell well. So I expect to sell this thing for between 60 and about 75 bucks. So right here, that's pretty good. And they can definitely go into a padded poly. Although when you deal with these smooth, smooth leather garments, you're going to want to make sure not to compact them too much or else you're going to get like a, a little leather stress kind of like line. So um, yeah, you want to kind of lightly pack it like this. I'm going to put some bubble wrap around it. Maybe I'll do a, a pad. I'll put a poly uh, bag around it and then I'll put it in a padded poly. So something really gentle like this, where it's not too folded over itself. I'll put that in a padded poly. I think that should ship out okay. So that's awesome. I had to pick that one up. Um, and uh, here we go. The last find, which is cool because it signifies something that you guys clearly know I'm all about, or not all about, but I put this as part of my, I would say this is comfortably five, maybe 10% of my, uh, income, uh, you know, eBay income. Oh, we'll say five. Okay. Um, but bags. Okay. I always tell you guys, I've been telling you guys for months. All right. Look at the bag section. Okay. And I know it's tough to decipher and this plays a big, this is significant because today I sold a bag, which is interesting, but the shipping kind of destroyed the hell out of me. It kind of pissed me off. But, um, uh, today I sold a $6 bag for, or last night, well, right before I went to bed, it cha-chinged and it like woke my wife up, but she was kind of pissed. But, uh, I sold a bag for like 93 or 92 something, something like that. It was a $6 bag. Sold it last night. Pretty cool. But the shipping went to like the most distant town in Connecticut. And it's kind of a big bag. So the shipping was $36.99. Can you believe it? $36.99 on shipping. I was like, holy crap. This is not a snowboard or like skis or anything. It just went to the most distant, probably most rural town of all time. Like it's just out in the boonies. So as the steps become longer to get the item to where it needs to be, the rate does go higher, you know? Um, so if it had landed like in, let's say Atlanta, for example, something a little bit closer to Austin, big hub, um, you know, that price probably would have been 19 bucks, but this is going to like super, super like distant Connecticut town. So anyway, yeah, I still made, you know, probably right around 50 bucks on that thing. But um, yeah, it was like, well, I should have made more, you know? But I just never thought it would go to like this. And that's just what happens with eBay. Sometimes you get these distant towns, right? And there's nothing you can do about it. So, and I did check a, a lot of, you know, different rates. And $36.99 was the cheapest one. And that's a three-day FedEx rate. All right. So let's talk about bag. This one right here that I found yesterday. Um, this was sold to me for $4.83. You might be thinking, what the hell is so special about that bag? It kind of looks like it fills in, and that's probably one of the things that I was thinking as I touched it and felt it. I fondled this bag. No, but like, um, you know, it's an interesting looking bag. The material is good. And uh, all these things regarding bags I am talking about in an upcoming bag guide that is nearly done, okay? Today, I think I wrapped up 90% of this thing. So I still have 10% left to go back and re-edit and tweak a couple things out, make sure the pictures are all lined up. Everything's perfect, but this bag guide is coming out like a freaking phoenix, like rising out of that freaking fire. So anyways, this thing is coming out soon and um, you guys definitely have to, I'm going to try to sound fresh right now, but you have to cop this guide. And um, I don't know if you know what that means, but I think it means you have to get it. So anyways, let's go to this bag right here. Why did I buy this thing? And uh, you know, first of all, 483 is like super cheap for bags. Like when you buy bags at garage sales or something, something like that, it's like $1 to 10 bucks. I feel like I've never, never really paid more than 
uh, 10 bucks for a decent bag at a garage sale, right? Now, some of the CC Filson ones that I've sold or uh, some of the other ones that you'll be seeing in the bag guide um, were bought for a little bit more. But um, I'll be proud to say that one of my, and I will be confident to say this, that my biggest bag flip of all time is still one that is not realized. It's actually in my eBay store right now. It was a $1.50 bag that I really believe if I was to take the price from, I think it's around 700 right now, if I was to take that price down to 500 bucks, I am willing to bet money that that thing sells at 500 bucks. So that would be my largest bag flip today. And that's still, you know, TBD to be done, I guess, whatever. But anyways, um, I would love, love to put that into the guide as a like my best flip, but uh, it hasn't occurred yet. So anyways, this bag for the third time, we're gonna try to get to this bag and get you guys the information. This right here is a collaboration kind of bag, which is interesting because companies like Supreme, um, there are a bunch of other bag companies that do collaborations, um, you know, like Levi's collaborated with Pendleton on some of their jackets. Um, you know, sometimes Supreme collaborates with Vans and then collaborate with, you know, this or that. And so, or North Face, right? Supreme is contract, uh, not contracted, but they, they do a collab, right? So this is a collaboration bag, right? This is actually a, a collaboration with Nixon watches, but this is a Millerain, right? A British company called Millerain. And it's a really neat, like waxed cotton slash canvas material bag, right? With some faux leather, which kind of is annoying, but uh, it's very comfortable. Um, has a laptop sleeve and everything like that. Has these really nice zippers on there and zipper pulls are all, you know, super nice leather. I mean, this is just like CC Filson leather, honestly. It's thick. It's awesome. The fabric is just like CC Filson fabric. Um, yeah, it's a nice bag for five bucks. You bet your ass I'm going to swing on this thing. And other collaborations that Millerain did with Nixon or Millerain did with Pendleton, for example, are selling between 70 and about a hundred bucks. Um, I think in new and some pre-owned status as well on his comps on eBay that I've researched. But this one right here is probably my guess is it's gonna it's gonna sell for about 60 to 70 bucks. That's my my guess on this. So I had to get into it. It's pretty cool. Um, and it's gonna go into a pre relatively flat box. Of course, when the backpack was produced, it was probably in a, in a plastic bag. It was folded over like this. So you can make them pretty compact. You don't be thinking, you don't have to be thinking, oh, it's a backpack. Now I gotta like ship it off and it's gonna be really annoying. First of all, don't ship it off completely stuffed. That's, that's hopefully uh, something that you already know by now. Um, but it's really nice and the accents are awesome. I mean, it's just a really, really good looking bag, small little blemish right here, but I don't really care. It's awesome. So yeah, anyway, um, that's the bag that I popped on yesterday. I seem to find about a bag a week, it seems like. And um, yeah, that bag guide is coming out really, really soon. I will be doing a pre-order for, I don't know if it's gonna be a week or something like that. It's probably just gonna be like two days. I'll let you guys know about it. If you follow my channel here, um, then you'll hear about the pre-order. If you follow me on Facebook, I'll put pre-order there as well. And the pre-order is basically gonna aim to be the lowest price that that bag guide will ever, 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 ever be, okay? Because I don't really like, super discounting my goods after the fact like i just don't there's a lot of there's a lot of there were a lot of hours and a lot of pictures and 95 percent of the pictures that are in this bag guide that i that i'm almost done with are all my pictures right from the past uh the first pictures that's in there one of the pictures that's in there came from 2004 so i know that much there's you know there's 14 years of just random pictures sitting in this bag guide i think you guys are really going to enjoy it um it's decked out it, it's I think it's at least at 70 pages as of this point right now. So that's cool. Lots of pictures though, tons of pictures and lots of things. Like if you are just a noob with bags or maybe you're an intermediate, you just want to learn some more things about bags, this guide will definitely do it for you. So anyways, be on the lookout for that. That's coming out soon. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned maybe five or six new things that you could be putting on eBay. And yeah, these aren't the best items to be putting on eBay in the whole wide world. But then again, no one finds the best items to be putting on eBay in the whole wide world. You just got to find really, really good items to put on eBay. And if you find enough good items, you're good to go, right? Don't be looking for this antique roadshow type stuff that'll never come. Just hustle good items, put them on eBay, know your ins, know your outs, kind of know your shipping, except sometimes you'll get $37 shipping on some, certain things, but it'll be awesome. Uh, regardless, you know, chase that cheddar, make that money, and I'll see you on the next Bonafide Hustler video. Take it easy.